Okay, Dr. Mindy here, and I have something incredibly exciting for you. Last week, our resetters did carnivore fasting and people lost weight like crazy. So I want to show you the reason why, and it's not what you think. Now, I, again, I'm, I said this in the video you're about to hear. If you're a vegetarian, hold on, because some of you are going to do well with the vegetarian diet. Some of you are going to do well with the carnivore diet. And in this video, I'm going to explain why. share with you guys something that just happened with my resetter movement last week. As many of you know, we always do a fast training week. And so last week I did something called carnivore fasting. And what we saw was that a large group of our resetters lost weight. And I want to explain to you why that happened. And I feel like it's a conversation that not enough people are having. Now, if you're a vegetarian and you're listening to this, please don't turn the video off because what I want to show you is that based off your bacteria that's in your gut, some of you are going to thrive with more meat eating and some of you are going to thrive with more vegetable and whole grain eating. So sit with me as I go through three major things that are happening to your gut and three major things that I want you to look at if you want to start dropping weight. This is especially for those of you that are feeling stuck, like you, you, you can't get over that hurdle. So let's start with this. Big picture overview. There are three things to know about your weight and your gut bacteria. For starters, weight is just so much more than willpower. So let me just, just take the guilt off. Weight is so, there's so much more to this picture. So, and one of those pieces is that you have bacteria in your gut that control blood sugar and you have a, a phylum of bacteria that control how much of your, the calories you consume get stored as fat. So for those of you that are like, I'm doing everything and it's not coming off, I, this video is for you and I want you to start thinking about your gut bacteria. So think beyond fasting, think beyond the, the, um, the calorie counting, think beyond exercise and let's look at your gut microbiome. Okay, second piece, mind blowing piece for some of you is your gut microbiome, the majority of the bacteria you have in your gut, they were handed down to you from your mother and then you either, those were either made better or made worse, usually within the first three years of your life. So the first three years is when you are starting to grow your own garden of microbiome in the gut that's either going to serve you well or not serve you well. This is important for those of you who look at family members and you're like, well, mom was overweight, sister's overweight, so I guess I'm doomed to be overweight. What if it's not genetics? What if it's the bacteria that got handed down? Third thing is that today's modern life is changing the ratio of good bacteria to bad bacteria. So for example, antibiotics. Antibiotic anything, every round of antibiotics you've been on, every meat you've eaten with antibiotics decimates your bacteria and starts to create an imbalance in your bacterial profile. Environmental pollutants, heavy metals, fake foods, omega-3 oils, stress, all of that is setting your bacteria up for a scenario where you will hold on to weight no matter what you do. Okay, so those are, that's my first three big picture items here. Okay, there are three things I want you to look at. Now, hang in with me through this, this video because at first when you hear this, you might be like, this is crazy. I don't know how I'm going to be able to gauge. I'm going to make it simple at the end, so sit tight. The first thing you have to look at is something called the Firmicutes to Bacteroides Ratio. If you have a gut test that you've ever done with any doctor, go find that gut test. We love the gut zoomer. Go find that test and look at what they call your FB ratio. If your ratio is, if you have too much Firmicutes and not enough Bacteroides, studies are showing that you will hold on to weight. 
Firmicutes is what will take calories and will store them as fat. So you do not want more Firmicutes than Bacteroides. You do not want that ratio to be uh, where it's accelerating the Firmicutes, okay? When the Bacteroides, by the way, for those of you that are struggling to bring your blood sugar down, the Bacteroides, when it is low, your blood sugar will be very difficult to, make, to bring down. So those of you with type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, those of you that are keto and you're losing, um, you're not getting that blood sugar down, it's a good chance that you don't have enough Bacteroides and you have too much Firmicutes. Okay, how did you get too many Firmicutes? Well, we're back at modern life. So antibiotics, again, creates an environment where Firmicutes will increase. Heavy metals, those of you who've been through our heavy metal detox, you know that when you, get, you detox those metals that you start to drop weight. When the metals are there, when neurotoxins, things like fluoride and formaldehyde that you get in like flu shots and glyphosate and pesticides that are sprayed on our food, all of that is increasing firmicutes and creating an environment where firmicutes will grow. Stress and then refined carbohydrates. So think about this for a moment. We are living in a moment in time where it appears that the majority of people have metabolic syndrome and have weight loss resistance. Yet what have the majority of people been doing? Antibiotics, poor food, bad oils, toxins in our soils, toxins in our air, and all of that has been flipping this bacterial balance so that there is more firmicutes than bacteroides that person now gains weight and they get frustrated because they go on every single diet and they can't get that diet to change, they can't get their weight to budge. If that is you, I'm gonna give you some ideas to flip it back. First idea, and this is just keep an open mind as I tell you this, if you know this could potentially be you, you are gonna thrive with more of a meat-based diet. So last week we took our resetters, we put them on what I call carnivore fasting. We've got hundreds of thousands of people that, that participated in the experiment and holy cow, did people lose weight. It was unreal how people dropped up to 10 pounds in five days. And so many people were like, what? I, how did this happen? I've been trying to keep protein down because I'm trying to stimulate autophagy. How did this happen? I can tell you for myself, I'm on the sixth day of uh, carnivore fasting, and sure enough, I feel like my body's just dropping weight, my energy's up, my ketones are up. I did a stool test last week uh, before I went on carnivore, carnivore fasting. I'm doing another stool test tomorrow, so stay tuned to my channel. I'm gonna show you what happened to my Bacteroides Firmicutes balance from going carnivore. But if you know you've been on lots of antibiotics, you know you've had a lot of crappy food, you know you've got a lot of toxins, my first recommendation is just try carnivore fasting for a couple of days and see if you drop weight. If you drop weight, hmm, that might be a sign that you need to bring that into your variation. I'm not a fan of carnivore fasting forever, but I am a fan of it as a way to use, as a splash to start to change this microbiome balance. Okay, number two, there is another ratio and it's called your pre-Votella uh, uh, bacteria to your Bacteroides or what they call the PB ratio. Now there was a study done on the PB ratio and it was out of the University of Copenhagen and what they did is for 26 weeks, they had people eat fruit, vegetable, fibers, and whole grains. And what they found is, and it, the study was done on a, you know, about 60 people, so, but it's a human study. And what they found is 50% of the people lost in 26 weeks, they lost seven pounds. And the other half of the people lost three and a half pounds. And when they went to look at the microbiome, the difference between the people that lost more weight, the ones who lost seven pounds compared to the three, they had a, Low, a high PB ratio, okay? So now you're listening to this and you might be like, well, that doesn't really help me. I don't know what my PB ratio is. So I'll talk about that in a moment. But what I can tell you is that if you have this high ratio, the, the you are gonna do really well on a vegan diet. 
you are gonna do really well on fruits, vegetables, whole grains. You're gonna keep your weight where you want it to be. So test it. Do three days carnivore fasting and then try three days of vegetables, fruits, fibers, and whole grains. I would encourage you to put it with, this, with the same fasting window. In carnivore fasting, we did 17 hours. So keep the 17 hour window and try eating those foods I just mentioned and see which one works better for you. There are a lot of studies showing that when people hit that three day mark, the meat eaters typically start to lose weight quicker, but you do your own self science. Okay, third thing, there are multiple studies showing that the more diverse your microbiome is, the more regulated your blood glucose will be, it's gonna help you get into ketosis better, and it's gonna help you lose weight. So really cool study that they did where they took 77 pairs of twins, one that was normal weight, one that was obese, and they looked at their bacteria and they tried to figure out why the, obese, the one was obese. Same genetics, same mom, so they came through with the same bacteria. Why did one gain weight, not the other? And what they found is it was diversity of their bacteria, their gut microbiome. So again, our gut zoomer tests this and it'll tell you if you have diversity. So one way to increase your diversity is just to start eating different foods. So if you find meat is really easy for you, don't just eat hamburger don't, or beef, don't just eat chicken, like launch into some buffalo and some venison and some goat and like different fishes and try to expand that. If you find the vegan or vegetarian diet works really well for you, don't just eat the same vegetables over and over again. You gotta widen your diet. That's how you improve diversity. And by the way, what kills diversity? Antibiotics. So every round of antibiotic you are on, you are increasing firmicutes, you are decreasing bacteroides, and you are killing the diversity of your gut. Can you see in an antibiotic loving culture why we have an obesity problem? Now, I wanna put a bonus thought in here before I kind of give you a, a final steps on what to do. What I, I wanted to understand what fasts do best for the gut and what, can change, what fast will change the microbiome the best. Turns out there's two studies. They're both mouse studies, so I just wanna put that out there. 16 hour, a 16 hour study shows that when you fast consistently for 16 hours, they start to see more growth of good bacteria in your gut and it enhances the diversity. At 24 hours of fasting, we start to see that stem cells get repaired. So the internal mucosal lining of your gut starts to repair. So if you suspect that the, your weight loss is a gut issue, then I would encourage you to at least be fasting 16 hours every day and once a week throw in a 24 hour fast so you can get those stem cells. Okay, now what do you do with all this information? So the first thing that I, that I will tell you is experiment with those two different types of eating. Do it for a three to five day period. I, I like five days, try five days of carnivore fasting and then try five days of vegan with 17 hours of fasting and just see which one you lose weight more on. Um, second thing, run a gut zoomer. Gut, my gut zoomer, I flip and love this test because I can look right at that test and I can say, yep, these ratios are off. This is the diet you want to be doing. So if you want to know more about our gut zoomer, just put gut zoomer in, in the comment and we'll send you a link. Last thing, we are doing a metabolic reset in the middle of July. We do them every other month. I am on a mission to help people get out of metabolic syndrome. If this is intriguing to you, you want to understand these principles of weight loss, join us in the metabolic reset because this is where I can interact with you on Zoom and I can help, get you, help you find the weight loss path that is best for you. So just put metabolic reset in the note in the comments and I'll make sure that you get a link for it. I'm gonna finish with this thought. Your body is a miracle. You were not meant to hold on to fat. It is not always a, dis a discipline problem. Yeah, if you're eating crappy food, if you're living the standard American diet, if you've been on a lot of antibiotics, you gotta change that microbiome. 
But stay tuned because on Friday, I'm going to be putting out a video on the five steps that I recommend to unstick you from weight loss. And I'll show you that there are so many things you can do. And the conversation I want to get started, the, 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 the idea I want to get implanted into your head is that, there, that you're not out of answers. And one of your answers may be your microbiome. So, as always, I hope that helps. You're born in a miracle. Don't give up on yourself. Keep questioning. Keep asking for answers. Keep, keep looking for that perfect diet for you because everybody has their own path to weight loss. Everybody. So I want to teach you how to find your path. And as always, I hope that helps.